Good morning all. Well today I'm making PWM5 solar charge controllers again uh, taking the finished circuit boards like this one and the first thing I'm going to do is attach wires so on the back of the board there are four folded over wiring points uh, those two at the bottom there are for ground and the two at the top there are the legs of the MOSFET and therefore red and yellow and I've prepped up um, a load of wires I've soldered these and you can see that um, I like to get the tinning on the end of the wire quite fat so there's quite a big blob of surplus solder on there so that it makes a good connection with the uh, bits of metal on the board let's do that so the first thing is to now, I've got to be careful not to speak too loud because I'm right next to the microphone. Tin these, put a good blob on there. So that the uh, wire will have lots of solder holding it on. So, I start with the yellow wire. And just heat up the solder and let it flow move on to the black wire just line them up so that they're parallel heat it up the solder flows doesn't matter if it slips off a little bit spin this round to the other black wire like that and then I finish off with the red wire which goes there and that's it, those are the four wires now I have a number of pre-prepared uh, bits of, I think it's 3mm heat shrink in three colours uh, all cut to 12mm lengths and then I'm going to drop a couple red and black on this side and then flip it over the other way and put the yellow and black on. Okay, let's see if I can do this with the camera precariously balanced. That might have been out of shot. Let's try the yellow and black. So all the heat shrinks are on. So now I switch from the soldering iron to my glue gun, which is, oh, what is it? A Tech 175-12. Who makes that? Can't read that. Power adhesives. Uh, okay, so let's put the camera here and try gluing this. All I'm doing is gluing the black wires to the back of the board and the yellow and red wires so that the whole lot just and then you've got to try and remove the string so that the whole lot is just stuck to the back of the board and uh, no more strain can be put on those four wires. And then the glue is made to dry with a 12 volt fan which uh, actually is being powered using solar power. I wanted to power more of the parts of this process with solar power, but never got round to it, and uh, the fan is the only thing I actually solar power during the manufacture of these devices. So now I'm setting up ready for uh, tipping the glue into the ends of this inner sleeve. So the first thing I have to do is put the inner sleeve over the unit there. It kind of grips because of the glue that's now on the back of the board and then when I heat this up that glue partially melts and uh, it sticks in place but I've got to get this quite accurately aligned um, and also this way so it's not tipped over too much and then when that's a roughly central I'll put that under the heat gun. Now I would show this but it's quite um, the difficult process, it requires a bit of artistry and I just can't work out a way of getting the camera 
uh, involved with me holding this with one hand and heat gunning it with the other. So I'll just get on with that, I think. So the next part of the process is to tip glue into the end of the controller to seal it, put a slug of hot glue. So I've clamped the controller with a bit of protective sleeving onto the desk and then I sort of do this to kind of make it hang correctly like that and then I start tipping glue in. Now once again, I've got to try and do this one handed. Let's see how we go. No, I can't do that. Something not right. So I've had to devise a makeshift camera mount, uh, which is this spirit level clamp to the bench, and a plate holder. So I'll put the camera on there, and see if I can do the gluing. So it goes in one end, cross into the other end. No, you mustn't put too much in, although it does sink down a bit. Let's just tip it to distribute it evenly. Oh, the one thing I've forgotten to do is put the fan on. So let's plug that in, bring the fan into position, and that cools the glue. Now occasionally, now that should pull in quite nicely, I think. It's kind of sagged open a bit. But um, as it cools down, it will tighten up and close up. And that should make uh, a reasonably good glued end. So I'm just doing the remaining gluing of the yellow end. And I've got two of these on the bench uh, at any one time, because it takes a little bit of time for the glue to dry, even with the fan blowing at it. And then when I've done all the yellows, I'll switch them around and do the red end. So that one's pretty much set. The glue's just starting to go cloudy. Looks very different to this other one where the glue is still quite clear. So this one can come out and uh, go on the bench. So the last of the yellow ends is just being cooled by the fan and I've set up for the first of the red ends. Now the red end is quite different to the yellow end because since the bottom is now sealed on this, when you put the glue into the top, the air inside the unit gets hot and it wants to push a bubble of air up through the molten glue. So it's very important to get it to cool quickly and um, try and prevent that bubble of air coming up. So you have to lay the glue down in a slightly different sequence and get the fan on it really very quickly indeed. So this time I have to get the glue in the left hand side and then go over to the right and then finish up in the middle and not too much glue on this side because of course it doesn't sink down because there is an airtight seal now inside the unit and then get the fan on it quite quickly before the dreaded bubble comes up. It won't come up with the fan on it. I used to do this without the fan but the bubble became such a problem that uh, I now use the fan all the time. So there's the last one uh, drying under the fan. These three are now all done. Uh, the glue gun can now be switched off. So let's do that. And uh, that can cool down. And then as soon as that's uh, set, that's four controllers ready and waiting for the diodes to be put in the yellow wires. Now in part one of this video I suggested that um, I might do a series of videos on how the PWM5 went from a prototype uh, through to a finished production product ready for sale and uh, it was quite uh, a popular idea so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start a series of videos called PWM5 uh, project to product and I'll go through the whole thing from how I identified my own need for a charge controller and then how I eventually got to the finished product. And I'll also talk about uh, what the inspiration was for designing the PWM5. Here's a little uh, clue. 
And I'll also be completely honest about things that didn't go quite according to plan. Some of the, uh, the failures. And I'll talk about the economics. Was it worthwhile making nearly 900 of these things, uh, taking about an hour and a half to make each, and therefore working for little more than minimum wage? Then there's also the CE mark, how you go about testing for compliance. And also perhaps a few words on where some of these ended up. Uh, the frozen wastes of Greenland, uh, the stifling heat of Central Africa, the jungles of Borneo, just some examples. And of course uh, numerous caravans and boats and garden sheds. So watch out for that, uh, PWM5, project to product.